good morning and uh, welcome to Faith Baptist Church online. Uh, we are so glad that you have chosen to watch and worship with us today. Uh, again, if you are new to our church, we welcome you and uh, hope someday soon we'll be able to meet together corporately and certainly we invite you to come uh, to one of our services. If you are watching on YouTube, it would be very helpful to us if you would like uh, the channel, subscribe, and also if you would click the bell, and that way you will receive notification for when future services air, uh, as well as sometimes a special throughout the week. So please be mindful of that, and again, thanks for watching. Before I fall, before I You answer me from where the thunder hides. I can't outrun this heart I'm tethered to. With every step, I collide with you. You 
Good morning, Faith Baptist Church. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Uh, just a few quick announcements that we need to run through. Um, Caswell, Caswell is still on. I've been having a lot of parents asking about that. So uh, the next payment will be May the 10th. So May the 10th, parents, I'll have that posted all over social media. Um, and then we'll talk about you know how to get that in via push pay or via checks. We're only 70 days away um, as of today, which is, um, it's getting closer and closer. Um, so 70 days away from Caswell. Then in June, we will have a parent meeting, uh, June the 14th. That's when the last Caswell payment is due. So June the 14th. Um, I have a special young lady up here with me. Her name is Emma, Emma Davidson. Uh, this will be her first year at Caswell. Uh, I invited her today to pray um, over our service, over offering, um, and over our mission uh, coming up this summer. Uh, remember, please, the, the Push Pay app. If, uh, if you're wondering how to give, continue to give to the church, the Push Pay app, just download that app uh, on there, and then there's different tabs in there. You can give to the general fund, the building fund, or the mission fund uh, via that app. Uh, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Emma. And she's going to pray over um, our offering and our mission. Emma? Dear Lord, just pray for um, the coronavirus and just pray for everyone who has it. And just pray for um, that we can go to church soon again and um, that everyone can just gather together. And pray for Caswell and that it can keep being still on and that it doesn't go to be like not on. And just pray for the offering today. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Emma.
Well, who is ready uh, to get back uh, to regular life? I mean, even if your life is uh, boring, uh, you're probably ready to get back to some sort of things being normal. We all kind of feel that way, and we're all ready uh, to, for things to get back as they were. Uh, we're ready to be back at work, be back at church, uh, maybe even go back to school, because we like things to be consistent. We like things to be normal. Nothing wrong with that. But what if... God has something better than what we consider normal. So we're going to start looking at Ruth, and uh, we're going to focus on chapter 1 today. We'll probably be there for the next several weeks, so if you want to read ahead and study this passage of Scripture, please do so. That will certainly be helpful. Uh, but today, we're going to start in Ruth chapter 1. Ruth 1.1, 1, 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab. He and his wife had two sons. Now we know from our study of God's word that the time when the judges ruled, uh, this was not a, a good time for Israel. Uh, the end of Judges tells us that things were kind of wild. It's almost like an Israel gone wild video. Uh, what's happening in their culture uh, at this time. People, there's no standard for morality. People are doing what they want to do. Uh, there is no spiritual climate there whatsoever. So the Bible says in Judges at the end that everybody did what was right in their own eyes. And we can imagine how chaotic uh, that would be. We even see snippets of that in our own culture. Uh, no standard, uh, no adherence to biblical principles, uh, people doing what they deem is right and what they think is okay. The Bible says that this man, and we're going to see him in just a minute, uh, he goes to Moab. So things are bad in Judah. But you go down to Moab, it's even worse. I mean, Moab would have made Vegas look like a Christian youth camp, okay? There was that much difference. Uh, things were really bad there. Uh, then you have a shortage of food. Uh, there was a famine in the land, so the people were hungry. So you add all of this together, and this man and his family, they were experiencing some very, very dark days. In verse 2, says, The name of the man was Elimelech. The name of his wife was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion, Ephraites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to the country of Moab and remained there. Now, Moab, we know, was a place that God told his people, uh, don't go there. Do not marry a Moabite. You're not to go out to dinner with a Moabite. You're to stay far away from them. But Elimelech and his family, they were going through a very difficult, hard time. These were dark days for him and his family. And so what happened is life got hard and his things didn't go right. It drove him to a place he was told, don't go there. Don't be there. Don't associate with those people. Don't marry those people. And yet he goes there. And we have to be careful, Christian, that we don't let dark Dark days drive us further away from God as they did for this man and uh, his family. Now, we can uh, understand why he left. Uh, if there is no food, you're going to want to make a change. You're going to want to do something different. Think about this. Let's say when the day comes, we finally uh, get to meet back together corporately. And uh, you're hearing a great sermon and it's 5 to 12. The sermon is still going on, and it's 5 after 12. Then it's 12.20, and it is so good, uh, you're still sitting there. Now, let's think. If you didn't eat breakfast that morning, uh, all you had was a cup of coffee, some water, and your stomach is going to start growling somewhere around 11.50, uh, 12 o'clock, you're going to start getting hungry. You leave the church, and then you head to your favorite place, uh, Bella's, Rancho's, Pioneer, or any other locally owned establishment, and you're there, and you're in line 
It's a long line. And you let that host or hostess come up and seat somebody in front of you who came in after you. It doesn't matter if you just came from church. You're going to have something to say about that. That's human nature. That's what happens when we get hungry. Imagine that going on uh, for several days, weeks, months, and there's not enough food. Listen, when you get hungry, you will do things you never thought you would do. So we say, how could he do that? He, he is taking his family. He's leading them away from God. How could he do that? He was hungry. God's people are not perfect. They have never been perfect. All throughout Scripture we see God's people, uh, they messed up. And God has never promised his people, that our life would always be a life with your toes uh, in the water and your fanny on the sand. God has never made us that promise. He has said there will be dark days, but don't let your dark days drive you to a darker place. We have to be careful of that. Verse 3, and the Bible says, Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, he died, and she was left and her two sons. Now, some have speculated, perhaps if they would have stayed in Bethlehem, maybe he wouldn't have died. Uh, we, don't, we don't know that. But the truth is, we know that life outside the perfect will of God is never really living. I personally don't believe that's why he died, because they left. It could have been, we don't know. But we do know that we have to be careful that we never attempt to live life outside of God's will. Uh, verse 4, so... Now they, her sons, they took wives of the women of Moab. The name of one was Orpah and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelt there about 10 years. So you have Naomi, her husband is dead. Her sons now are marrying a Moabite woman. It would be like a Trinity kid going and marrying a kid from Wheatmore. Or a Wheatmore kid, if you're a Wheatmore fan, marrying a kid from Trinity or Randleman or Central or some other kind of place or, God forbid, California, right? So we can understand that, what a horrible thing this was for uh, this family. This was against the very thing that God had said, don't do. Now, her husband is dead. Her sons, she's left her homeland. She is certainly feeling alone. She is certainly in uh, a dark place. And some would say, maybe she did something. Did Naomi do something? Uh, is God punishing her? Is God trying to get Naomi for the fact that she and her family, they moved away? Her husband died, and now she is in a, in a dark place. And here's what I want us to realize, Christian. We have to be careful uh, that we don't pursue and think, okay, God is judging them. God is trying to get them. God is trying to wake them. God can do that. But we better hope that if, we, if God turns out to be as fundamentalist and as conservative as we sometimes make him out to be, we're all going to be in trouble. Listen, we better hope and pray he stays on the mercy seat when it comes to us instead of the judgment seat. Therefore, we must make sure we extend that to other people. Verse 6. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread. Naomi hears about what God is doing. That within itself is a miracle. Keep in mind, uh, here in Moab, there was no, there was no Fox News, okay? Uh, Naomi didn't read Aunt Bertha's post on Facebook saying, hey guys, I want my family and friends to know uh, there's bread in Bethlehem. Come to Bethlehem. That didn't happen, okay? So it's a true miracle how Naomi heard, hey, your homeland, where you belong, where you were meant to be, know this, right now, they have food. It's time to go back. So she knew where she belonged. And uh, she's getting ready to head that way, verse 7. Therefore, 
she went out from the place where she was and her two daughter-in-laws with her, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said to her two daughter-in-laws, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. Verse 9, the Lord grant that you may find rest each in the house of her husband. So she kissed them and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, surely we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, turn back my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there still sons in my womb that they may be your husband? Naomi is ready for some social distancing, okay? Her husband is dead. Her two sons have died. She's had people at her house, no doubt. They've brought casseroles. They've stayed. They've hung out. Naomi is ready. Hey, y'all need to go. She's ready to see some taillights for a change instead of the headlights of people coming. So that's where Naomi's at. Verse 12, turn back, my daughters. Go. For I am too old to have a husband. And then she says this. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband tonight and should also bear sons, would you wait for them till they were grown? Would you restrain yourselves from having husbands? Naomi is in a very, very dark place. She's lost hope. And the truth is, she doesn't want to bring others to this dark place where she is at. She is encouraging her daughter-in-laws to go back because Naomi is like, hey, I'm hopeless. It's over for me. There's still hope for you. So go find yourself a husband. Go back to your homeland. I'm going to go, but you stay because I don't want you to become and end up like me. Then she goes on to say, No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is against me. She is in such a dark place right now that she has even believed the lie that God Almighty is against her. Because of that, she said, Hey, you need to go. You need to leave. Did Naomi know? She was in a dark place? Absolutely. She didn't need somebody to tell her she was in a dark place. She didn't need somebody to come along and speculate. Hey, Naomi, you're in a dark place because you and your husband, y'all come down here to Moab and you really messed up and your husband's dead, your sons are dead. Listen, if you would just serve God, pray a little more, read your Bible a little more, hey, you'd come out of this. That's not what Naomi needed. She's in a dark place. She realizes that. Look at what verse 14 tells us what Naomi needs. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Some people just know what hurting people need. Some people truly have the gift of compassion. Some people really know how to reach out to people who are in a hard time, a dark place, people who are at their wits end, people who have had life come down on them extremely hard. There are some people who just know how uh, to reach out and be there. But I want you to get this from this passage. There's going to always be people in your life who are going to stay with you no matter what. You may have a friend, if you go through, I don't know, job loss, divorce, health issue, just life, that person, they stay with you. Listen, thank God for them. You're also going to have people in your life who are going to leave. You're going to have people who, when things get hard, they're going to bail. Same is true in the church. The church is going to always have people to come and people to go. People sometimes will leave a church if things get a little hard, a little testy, man, they, they bail. If things are not going like they want, they'll bail. That's always going to happen. It's going to be true in your family. You may have family members or even, God forbid, a spouse who ups and decides, hey, I don't want to be here anymore. It's going to happen. You can't control either group. You can't, Naomi couldn't control. She truthfully tried to get them to go, but Rose said, no way. 
I am with you now and forever. The other one, hey, decided it's okay. I'm going to go. You can't control either group, so don't stress about it. Then verse 15. And she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods, little G. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said this, and treat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And then look at this. And your God shall be my God. Essentially, Ruth got saved right here. Remember, Ruth's a Moabite. Many gods, okay? She, she had not yet chosen to serve God. She wasn't a God follower. The Moabites didn't serve Jehovah God. Evidently, Naomi, even though she was in a very dark place and had been there for quite some time, Ruth still saw something in Naomi that said, hey, I want what she has. Now, in my opinion, Naomi was not the greatest uh, representative for Christianity, not the greatest representative of faith in God, not the greatest representative of, hey, look at Naomi and become a God follower because she has been through it. She has been through death three times, a spouse and two kids. That's a tough day. That's a tough life. She's even saying, you know what? Some of this, I believe some of this bad has happened to me because the hand of God, he, he is against me. She is in no way a poster child for worshiping Jehovah God. Yet Ruth sees something in her that says, you know what? I'm going to stay with you no matter what. And even though, Naomi, you say, hey, the hand of God is against you, even though you think God has turned his back on you, even though you think it's over, I want you to know, Ruth, I am here and your God, Jehovah God, he is going to be my God. That, my friend, is a miracle. And that is a Moabite, a lost person, a non-God follower, Jesus follower, seeing something different in somebody else, even when life gets hard and dark. And I want you to know, the reality is, your faith probably shows up more to a lost world on your dark days than it does on the days when the sun is shining and all is going well. Church, we have an opportunity right now in the middle of what's going on in our nation, our culture, our area. Okay, everybody is aggravated. Everybody is frustrated. People are at their wits end, this stay-at-home business. And then, you know, we got a report this week. It's going to be extended even longer. We're all sick of it. Okay, we're all sick of it. We're tired, we're weary, we're exhausted of it. For us, we're going through a dark time just like Naomi. But what about the Ruths out there who are watching, who are serving other gods, who are consumed with another way of life and are consumed with all kinds of things? Listen, don't ever forget, there are people watching us. And yeah, do we get frustrated? Absolutely. I mean, I don't like Mexican takeout. It's not the same, okay? Flounder is not the same. By the time I get it from the seafood place to my house, it's lost its crunchiness. It's not the same. We're all aggravated. Uh, it's this six feet distancing thing. It's just, just a mess. It's just crazy. But there are people watching people watching, and they need to see in us, yes, we're going through some dark days. Naomi was also honest. She was honest about her frustration. Naomi, if, you were really, if, she was, if we really had the overall attitude here and we could see it in Scripture, Naomi was mad at God. I've lost my husband. I have buried him and two sons. She was mad. She was upset. Quite frankly, she was ready to be alone and by herself. But there was still something there that Ruth saw. Because Ruth said, your God is going to be my God. 
and Ruth's life was changed. Now, Naomi, she goes back home. And uh, look at, uh, we'll pick it up in verse 20. She's come, there's a celebration, and, and Naomi says to them, Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. Okay, she's still mad. She's still upset. She's still saying, hey, God has punished me. He's gone out against me. And this is in verse 21. I went out full. And see, that's not true. She didn't leave full. She left because there was a famine. So see, sometimes when things get dark and things aren't going our way, we exaggerate how good it was before. Okay, we exaggerate what the how good the past was, and that's what that's what Naomi is doing. I went out full, but the Lord has brought me home again, empty. Why do you call me Naomi? Since the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me. She's blaming God. She is upset. We've all been there. God, why is this going on? God, I need to work. God, I need to be with people. God, I feel like there are people I need to be talking to and reaching, sharing Christ with. There are things I need. God, why is this happening? Why do I have family members who are sick? And and God, why, why, why? We all, we've all been there. And Truth be known, a lot of us are there right now, okay? Because the longer this thing goes on, the more ready we are to get back to normal. Naomi was there. But I want you to notice the, the grace of God. Naomi experienced not God's judgment, but she experiences, experiences God's mercy. I truly believe, as we said a while ago, it was a miracle that she heard about what God was doing in Bethlehem, that there was food there. So, so she has gone back. And look at, look at verse 22. Naomi returned, and Ruth, the Moabite daughter-in-law, with her. Okay? Sometimes the greatest thing you can do for somebody who is in need is just be there. Hurting people, people who are in a dark place, they don't really need a speech. People who have just lost a loved one or a son or a spouse, sometimes they don't need a speech. They just need for you to be there. The only thing we read of Ruth saying to Naomi is, hey, I'm going with you. Essentially, I'm just going to be there. Wherever you go, I'm going to be there. Ruth didn't give her some of the cliche, didn't share with her a meme to help her, didn't even give her a Bible verse, and didn't sing her a hymn. She just said, I'm going to be there. And people in a dark place, many times, they don't need you to share with them a whole speech just simply be there. Now look at this. Now they came to Bethlehem. They get there just in time at the beginning of the barley harvest. Dark days, they're passing. She's getting through the hard time she's been through. She's gone back home. She's gone back to the place where where she belonged. She's there. In this journey, she's had some losses. She's she's lost some family. But she's gained a friend, a daughter-in-law, a family member who's going to stick with her. Was it God's ideal plan that her son marry a Moabite, marry Ruth? No. You cannot justify that from the Bible. But God took what was sin, what was wrong. God took what these dark days, he took that and he turned it around and he brings her home just in time for harvest. And hear me good, church. If you're in a a dark place and many of our people are, I've talked to you. You're in a dark place. And it's like, when will this end? Listen, God has a harvest for his people. He did it for Naomi. 
and he'll do it for you. And hear me good. I don't know how this is all going to play out. I'm not sure what our society and culture is going to look like a year from now. Nobody really knows. But I do know this. God's people, we are going to come out winners no matter what happens. You say, well, what if it erupts in chaos? And now CBS reported this week about a potential worldwide shortage of food. What if all these things happen? Listen, we might go through a dark time, but hear me good. They are not going to last forever for the child of God. So if you're in a dark place now, you hold on. Let the roots in your life minister to you. And if you don't have a root, listen, you pray, God, I need a root. I need somebody in my life who will stick with me through it all. Listen, God, I believe God will send you that. And better yet, God wants to be that person for you. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, Jesus Christ, if you've never placed your faith in him, if you don't know and believe that a holy God who created heaven and earth, that he loves you, quite frankly, I don't know how you're getting through this or any other day uh, in the year. So if you don't have that, listen, place your faith in Christ. It's simple. All you got to do is say, hey, God, forgive me. I've goofed. I've messed up. And I realize I need a Savior. I need a relationship with Jesus. I'm asking him to come, forgive me, cleanse me. I believe that he is who the Bible says he is, that he is the Son of God, the Savior of the world. He'll do it. He will change your life. He will be that friend. He will be your Ruth. He will be someone you can count on. Not that he's going to snap his finger and make the darkness all go away. But he will be right there with you. So if you're watching today, and that's you, feel free. You can email our addresses or on the church website. You can comment on Facebook. You can comment there in the comment section on YouTube. We will pray for you. We can, if we have to, we'll mail you something to help you along in this journey. Uh, but make sure, if you don't have it, make sure you ask God for it and he will give it to you. Let's pray. God, today, uh, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for this wonderful story, God, of how uh, a, a lady who went through some dark times, who went through some dark days, who experienced death, who experienced famine, uh, who experienced living in a, in a world of chaos. God, you brought her through. And God, you brought her through dark days because to better days. And God, we all want that. God, we're all praying for that. And so, God, for all the people who are watching who are in a dark place right now, God, I pray this would be preparation for better days to come. So, God, may your people be encouraged that no matter what happens, God, there are better days ahead for the child of God. And that is because of what Jesus Christ did for us. And so, God, we are so thankful uh, for him and, God, for you sending him to die in our place. God, thank you for the privilege we have, even for the technology that's, that's been made available so that we can still uh, worship you, hear your word. And God, again, we are praying for a quick end to this. God, give the scientists, give the medical profession, God, give them uh, the wisdom, the knowledge uh, to come up with the vaccine, whatever needs to happen to bring this to an end so that we can gather together uh, as your people, in one place. Soon we pray. In Christ's name, amen. Hope you enjoyed today's service. Please like and subscribe to our channel.